General Mark Milley, back in the Biden administration's incredibly stupid withdrawal from uh, Afghanistan. But did he sing a different tune during the Trump administration? Afghanistan is quickly becoming a breeding ground for terror groups like ISIS. But back in 2017, President Trump, who was right again, predicted exactly that. The consequences of a rapid exit are both predictable and unacceptable. A hasty withdrawal would create a vacuum that terrorists, including ISIS and Al-Qaeda, would instantly fill, just as happened before September 11th. Joining me now is a former chief of staff to the acting defense secretary under former President Trump, Cash Patel. Hey, Cash, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate you having me. So, Cash, listen, you were in the room for a lot of these high-level conversations during the Trump administration. I'm getting really tired here of Joe Biden blaming President Trump for the deal with the Taliban. Cash, that was a conditions-based deal. And just three days after the deal, when the Taliban broke the deal, Cash, Trump bombed the hell out of him three days later. So it's really weird how Biden's saying he's locked in by the Trump deal when Trump didn't consider himself locked in by the Trump deal. No, and, and you're absolutely right. Look, this is a total failure of leadership, as you've been talking about for all week. When you don't have a plan to attack your enemy and safeguard American citizens in the theater of a war, the only thing you're left with is politics and the politicization of the national defense apparatus. And you're left with old men like Mark Milley lying to the American public and chasing around white supremacy in the halls of the Pentagon instead of executing ISIS and al-Qaeda in Afghanistan like we did. What we call preparation of the environment, what we call a conditions-based withdrawal in order to achieve that success you have to exact a magnitude of power that they cannot overcome. And President Trump did that with his actions when I was running his counterterrorism program, with his predator program, with his special operations forces. President Biden is doing that with nothing but his mouth, and he's reacting to the situation on the ground. He is reacting to the loss of American service members. He is reacting to his failure, and the only reaction he has is blame. And that is a abysmal failure of leadership, Dan. Yeah, that's not what you do. I mean, the whole essence of leadership is if you screw up, you say you screw up and you fix it. He's focused exclusively on, on, on blaming other people other than himself. And he hilariously keeps saying, I take responsibility, but that's not how any of that works. Cash, listen, again, you were in the room for a lot of these conversations. I'm very disappointed in, yeah. in, in Mark Milley. Again, with all due respect to the man's prior military service, he is still a public servant and a very powerful one at that right now. He's seeming to imply now that, yeah, the decision to abandon Bagram, which is just asinine, that, that he went along with this. But do you remember him saying anything like that when, when you were dealing with him, when you were working in the Trump administration? No, when he was working for us, he was sensible with the intelligence. He knew the force threat posture that al-Qaeda and ISIS could pose in Afghanistan during our withdrawal process. And he knew Bagram, which we called our command and control, our C2 node, for that theater of war, could not be cut off. You cannot cut off the head of our operations if you want to manhunt al-Qaeda and terrorists and safeguard American citizens and conduct hostage rescue operations. And he was in the room with the Secretary of Defense, the Director of National Intelligence, myself, the room being the Oval Office, when we made the right calls based on the intelligence on the ground that you cannot abandon Bagram, you cannot unconditionally surrender, and if you do so, the Taliban would come back with force in days, not years, days. And he's saying the exact opposite publicly because he's cowarding to his own ego and the political whims of the mainstream media. And that is the highest ranking uniform officer's only job is to be apolitical and advise the President of the United States. He is failing in his mission entirely. Uh, and that's stunning, Cash, that he was in the room and saying something completely different than he's saying now. That, that's just, uh, that's really tough to hear. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on yeah. the show to give us that information. The American people deserve to hear it. Thanks for coming on tonight. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Dan. Appreciate it.